Hey there, my name is Drew Brashler, and in this video, I'm going to be talking about how to reorganize your layout of your Behringer X32. If you're brand new to my channel, I am all about helping you feel more confident in your production gear no matter where you're starting from. So let's go ahead and dive in. Now, I've seen this a couple times in helping some churches where we've copied over from a previous soundboard and just plugged everything into the X32 when you bought the new console, and you kind of have your layout of your channels in a bunch of different spots. Spots. So for instance, here we have vocal two on channel two, but then we have vocal one on channel four, vocal four on channel six, and vocal three on channel seven. And typically this is because you add some an, an additional wireless microphone and maybe it's a newer model wireless microphone. Well, that way we end up changing the number of that, of that microphone on our board and make that the primary microphone. So this does happen from time to time, but I want to show you how to reorganize this so that it's going to be a better flow for any volunteers. For instance, if you're looking at this, man, I wanna reach for fader one if I'm going for vocal one, and fader four if I'm going for vocal four. I, I don't wanna have this being all like this on all of these different faders. So what we need to do first is to write down your input list. So what that means is I want you to take out a piece of paper and I want you to look at the back of your board and I want you to document which microphone is being plugged into which input. So for instance, here I have four microphones. I'm gonna write down that vocal one is in input four. And I'm gonna write down that vocal two is in input two. Vocal three is in input seven and vocal four is in input six. Now that's a little bit confusing <laughs> writing those down, but I want you to go through one through 32, including all of your aux ins and write those down. This is gonna be called a patch list. And if you want to have a little bit of extra credit, go ahead and write down your outputs and then put this into an Excel or a numbers or a pages sheet and print it out. Next, what we're going to do is we are going to copy and paste and move these channels. There's two ways of doing this. We can either copy and paste or we can save this as a preset and then load that preset on a channel. And I'm gonna show you both of them. The first one that I'm gonna show you is how to copy and paste a channel. So the first channel that we're going to move is I'm going to move vocal one, and I'm gonna move this from channel four to channel one. And I'm also going to have you write down which channels you end up moving, because we're gonna actually have to change the patch on the back of the board, where it's actually plugged into. For instance, I have this microphone, and this is on vocal three. Hey, check, 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 so you can see that right there. But I'm wanting to move vocal three over to three. So you'll need to write those things down whenever you move a channel. So go ahead and select our vocal one, and I'm going to have you press the home button in the upper right hand corner of our mixer, and then press the utility button. And then what we want to do is we want to copy. We wanna press copy. And we can see that we have a copied channel, channel four, vocal one. This is now copied. And I'm going to paste this on channel one. So then I'm going to just select channel one, and I'm going to press paste. And it's going to ask you, are you sure you want to paste your channel settings from channel four to channel one? And I'm going to say yes. So I'm going to go ahead and hit the page select yes button. And now we can see that I have a copy of vocal one from channel four to vocal one on channel one. So what you want to do now is you want to unplug that XLR on the back of the board and plug it into channel one. So the next thing that I'm going to show you is how to save a preset of vocal three and move that over to channel three. So we can simply select our vocal three on channel seven. We can hit the library button and then we're going to end up saving this. So I'm going to have you scroll all the way down to the bottom of your mixer and you should see at 77 all the way down to 100, these should be clear. But also if you want to just save it up at the top over top of something, you can definitely do that as well. So I'm going to save this on 78 and I'm going to press save preset. And I'm gonna go ahead and call this vocal three and I'm gonna press save. So we can see that we have vocal three saved here. The next thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to select my channel three, 
and we're just going to load this preset onto this channel. Now again, we wanna make sure that our recall scope is all highlighted. Now what the recall scope means is that if this is highlighted, it's going to save over the settings on this channel. So for instance, if I wasn't wanting to copy everything except the EQ, I would go through and deselect those and make sure that only my EQ is selected, and then I would just press load. But I'm wanting to save over everything. Now we can press load preset, and I'm going to load this to this channel. And we can now see that I have vocal one, two, three, all in a row here. So I'm going to copy over my last channel, which is vocal four. So I'm going to press home, and I'm just gonna use the copy paste. So I'm going to copy, and I'm going to go to input four, and I'm going to press paste. Now I'm going to confirm that I want this, and here's an interesting one. If you have phantom power applied to the current channel that you were copying over, it is going to ask you, do you want to activate your phantom power? I do like that it's asking this because if you happen to have a microphone that might be damaged from phantom power, you wouldn't want to turn that on until you know that it's ready to do that. So I'm going to press confirm that I want to copy that over and we can see that I have vocal one, two, three, and four, and four has that phantom power. The next thing that I'm going to do is I'm wanting to just erase these inputs here. So I'm going to go ahead and just simply copy a blank channel. I'm going to go to my channel 32. I'm going to press copy. And I'm going to just go and paste it over here and paste it over 7. Now, the very last thing is I know that this microphone used to be in channel seven, and I need it to put it on channel three where that vocal three ended up moving to. So I'm just going to simply unplug and plug it into input three. And now all of my settings on this microphone are the same. So I have moved all of my channels that I wanted to into the order that I want to have them now. So the next thing that you need to do is you need to just double check that you've patched everything correctly in the back and then update your patch list and print it out and just put it right to the side of the board. Now, I hope this was a helpful video for you. I think that organizing your board and getting the most important channels on the top layer and then burying some of the channels that maybe you're not going to be accessing all the time. For instance, maybe some choir microphones that you only use for Easter and Christmas or that one playback computer that you only use every now and then. Putting those on the 17 through 32 layer is a great place of putting those. That way you can keep your most important channels on the top layer. So my top layer typically will have my vocal microphones, my pastor microphone, all of the things that I'm going to be adjusting a lot on my top layer. If you haven't already, make sure to subscribe to my channel as I'm always putting out new content every single week for you. And if you happen to have a video that you want me to make on a specific thing on the X32 or M32 or even other products, make sure you put a comment in that section below as I'm always reading through those to find the next video that you guys want me to make for you. Lastly, make sure to check out my website at drewbrashler.com. I have a whole bunch of articles and information there that will help you with your products. So thank you so much for watching.